Hello everyone and welcome to the second of our video tutorials on the legal profession. In today's video we're going to look more closely at the work of barristers. Barristers are regulated specialist legal advisors and courtroom advocates. In our last video tutorial we compared some of the key differences between barristers and solicitors. And I'll just quickly remind you of, of some of those key differences. So we saw last time that there are many more solicitors compared to barristers and solicitors are employed compared to barristers who are self-employed. Um, and one of the big differences we mentioned um, last time is that generally speaking, solicitors main role is that they give confidential legal advice and the main role of barristers generally is advocacy, i.e. Um, presenting cases in court. So we've mentioned just then that barristers uh, practicing at the bar are self-employed, but they usually work from a set of chambers um, where there usually be about 15 to 20 barristers working. And the majority of barristers concentrate on advocacy, where they are representing people or businesses in court or in a tribunal um, by advising their clients on the strengths and weaknesses of their case and by presenting their case for them. From last time, that barristers have full rights of audience, meaning that they can present cases um, in all of the courts in the hierarchy, not just the lower courts like solicitors. And um, barristers often provide specialist legal advice or opinions um, on their client's case. Um, even if it, it's not going to go to court, they can give advice nonetheless and they can draft documents for use in court as well. Barristers usually specialise in a particular area of law, such as chancery law, which means estates and trusts, or commercial law, or common law, including family, housing, personal injury, criminal law, entertainment law, environmental law, sports law. There's so many different areas that they can specialise in. And often barristers will specialise in a very specific, very narrow area and become absolute experts in that field. In terms of work, typically barristers will take instruction from clients and solicitors, understand and interpret the law. Um, they master and manage legal briefs. Um, they undertake legal research, write opinions, which they use to advise solicitors and other professionals. And they'll prepare cases for court um, in which they'll prepare legal arguments, um, advise the clients on matters of law and evidence. They represent clients in court, present the arguments in court, and they also examine and cross-examine witnesses as well. So a wide variety um, of tasks that they perform on a day-to-day -day basis, um, although we, we tend to think of them just delivering in court. Just like with solicitors, you have to know for the exam how you train to become a barrister. And this diagram here is showing you the three routes to becoming a barrister. So the quickest route is to do a law degree, join an inn of court, do the bar professional training course, be called to the bar and then take the pupillage. And you can see that the other methods here take longer. Look at the quickest route to becoming a barrister. This is the law degree route. Um, this diagram is just representing um, the stages slightly differently and I'll just talk you through those. So firstly, the academic stage, that would be the three year um, law degree. Um, that will be taken first and then they would join one of the four inns of court. And what this means is that a prospective barrister must join one of the four inns of court. And traditionally, there was a requirement to keep terms and this had to be completed by dining at one of the inns of court 12 times or to attend educational forums such as weekend residential course, courses. And this gives students the opportunity to meet senior barristers and judges and immerse themselves in the traditions of the profession. It's an opportunity as well um, for trainee barristers to try and get pupillages. 
the bar professional training course is a vocational course which teaches students the key skills needed to become a barrister and it's got a heavy focus on advocacy but it does teach other skills as well such as conferencing drafting opinion writing resolving of disputes out of court um, and students have to complete a bar aptitude test um, to make sure that only those that are likely to succeed actually gain a place on this course in the first place. It is an expensive course to take. Um, in London, the average cost um, of the bar professional training course um, can be up to £20,000. So it is an expensive course to take, particularly when you think you've had the expense of the law degree as well. And the final stage here is the pupillage. And this is the practical stage of the training where the trainee barrister becomes a pupil barrister to a qualified barrister. And the first six months involves the student barrister observing their master in court and assisting with paperwork. And in the second six months, each pupil is responsible for a personal um, caseload. And this is where they're gaining the experience, the practice um, to go on um, and be a self-employed barrister. And I've got a diagram here which is just comparing um, the different training routes for barristers and solicitors. So it is quite confusing that our two professions um, have totally different training routes. Um, there are some similar aspects. The LPC is similar in that it's the practical course if you like as is the bar professional training course for barristers um, but you need to distinguish and be totally clear on the differences between those two training routes both solicitors and barristers are both eligible for a promotion to qc which stands for queen's council and the award of queen's council is for excellence in advocacy in the higher courts and it's made to advocates who have rights of audience in the higher courts of England and Wales that have demonstrated the competencies um, to a standard of excellence. So QCs are very senior um, courtroom advocates who have demonstrated excellence in courtroom advocacy. And it's basically a sort of um, mark of quality, only the very, very best barristers or solicitor advocates will become QCs. And although solicitor advocates can apply um, to become QC, you can see from the statistics from 2016 that QCs are overwhelmingly barristers. 93% were barristers. Um, so the majority of QCs will be a barrister rather than a solicitor advocate. Then we know already the barristers are regulated by the Bar Standards Board, and the BSB is responsible for setting education and training for barristers, um, setting the standards of conduct, and also for handling complaints. So um, any complaints about barristers can be made to the BSB, um, and they might hold a disciplinary tribunal to fine up to £50,000 to barristers who are in breach of its code. It can also issue written warnings, make barristers take further training, suspend the barrister from up, for up to 12 months, it can actually disbar the barrister as well so that they can never practice again. So this is the body that is regulating um, barristers so that they're not hopefully taking advantage of people and they're doing their job um, in a professional manner. I have put some links on Solar um, to a really good BBC documentary um, on barristers and this one was on student barristers um, training to become barristers. They're only very short, most of them, but they're well worth a watch because they give you a real insight into the day-to-day -day work of a barrister um, and you get to see obviously inside of court, um, inside of chambers, etc. So it really puts everything into context. For this topic of barristers and solicitors, we also need to consider diversity. Um, and I've got some statistics here from 2018. Um, and unfortunately, um, the legal profession has been heavily criticised over the years for not being representative. Um, if you have a look at the statistics here, particularly for barristers, 
62.8% are male, 79% are white, 85% of our QCs are male, and 89.2% of QCs are white. So it's showing you a very particular picture about the diversity of the bar. Um, solicitors, more representative than barristers, roughly equal numbers, male and female. But you can see that still, mostly partners in private practice, overwhelmingly 67% are male. And again, 79% of our solicitors um, are white. So there has been um, an effort in recent years to try and encourage and promote diversity within the legal profession to ensure that our lawyers are representative of the society that they represent. And in, in order to do that, the Law Society now has a diversity and inclusion charter. There's a diversity access scheme um, and they're all following equality and diversity codes now to try and get more diversity within the profession. And that's certainly needed because if we look here at this graph from January 2018, this is showing um, perhaps the most depressing uh, data, I suppose. Um, this is showing ethnicity at the bar, and you can see that it is overwhelmingly um, white um, in terms of barristers. So this is something that, that is being looked at in terms of addressing, but we are still, as you can see, a long way off um, getting a more representative bar. And the last bit that you need to be aware of for the legal profession topic is you have to be able to talk about the fusion argument. And there is a debate about whether um, we should continue to keep the role of barristers and solicitors separate and continue to have separate training or whether we should merge both into one profession. And there are arguments for and against fusion, and I've summarised key arguments for and against on this slide for you. If we did fuse the professions and just had one overall lawyer, like you'll see in America, suits springs to mind, they just have one sort of lawyer that deals with all areas of law. An advantage of that is that students aren't having to pick which uh, route they want to go down too early and that students are all going to have the same foundation of training and skills. And that should mean as well that we've got reduced costs that we can pass on. Um, we're only going to need one lawyer instead of in the past we've needed a solicitor and a barrister. And that's going to result in more efficiency um, and less duplication of work potentially. And also from a client perspective, more continuity, dealing with the same person from start to finish and feeling like that relationship um, is being built between the client and the lawyer. And it also removes the sort of two tier ranking, um, allowing solicitors higher appointments as well. Equally, though, there are arguments against it. Benson Commission saying that it shouldn't be uh, fused. And one of the reasons for that is that there would be a loss of specialism. Um, that if you've got a lawyer doing everything, they would become an all rounder. And the phrase um, jack of all trades, master of none springs to mind here. That we would lose the specialist advocacy skills that our barristers currently have. Um, they also point out that there is a key difference between more office-based skills and advocacy and to expect lawyers to be skilled in both very different skills might affect the overall quality of service and we would lose our independent bar. Barristers currently provide a second opinion and fusion would lead to that loss of objectivity as well. Um, and we'd also lose the cab rank rule so um, there'd be no guarantee of representation for the client. So there are arguments for and against, um, and you have to be able to um, discuss that because that could be a possible 15 mark question on exam one, section B on the legal profession.